Alrighty, what is going on guys? It's Lachlan here and welcome back to a brand new episode of Pokemon Go. So for today's episode everybody, we're going to talk about the future updates to come to Pokemon Go. Now when you think about all the Pokemon games, there's a lot of features. To be honest, there's a lot of features in the game already that I'm kind of surprised about. We've got things like IVs, same type attack bonuses, uh, all the types at the moment, and then, you know, I wouldn't say better fighting system, but a, you know, unique one in which Vaporeon dominates. Hashtag nerf Vaporeon please. Every gym. Every gym. So before we get into all that, I want to chat about what I've been up to today already. Um, I went out with my brother to grab some food. On the way back, I was looking at the nearby list and I was like, oh dude, there's a Poliwrath and a Kingla nearby. So we turned to the street and then a Poliwrath showed up and I was like, oh sick, that's the Poliwrath. And I wanted to see what CP it was. And so we kept going down the road and then a Kingla in the exact same spot popped up. Then we had other Pokemon, an Otto's Caterpie, I can't remember right now. Just a bunch of like five or six Pokemon on the screen. It was crazy. And I think that might have done something to do with the swarm mechanic. I think people were chatting about this swarm thing and how like if you go to a certain populated area four or five six pokemon would just spawn out of nowhere at once and yeah that was pretty much it there was just uh two rats sitting right next to each other now i was intrigued because i wanted to try and see what cp they were unfortunately they were not very high cp at all they were not great and then i had some eggs hatch and they were also not great that was okay because we were just coming off our last episode, which was incredible. The late night Gold Coast session, we found so many new Pokemon, and it was actually really cool. I got to hang out with a bunch of other fans and viewers and just a bunch of random people, and, uh, you know, went on hunting back and forth for rare Pokemon. It was cool. So yeah, for today's episode, I want to chat about uh, this new Generation 2 Pokemon that are rumored to come around, and then after that, probably going to head out and try to hunt some Pokemon with our brother, maybe do a couple evolutions. We'll see how we go. So... Pokemon Go updates. What have we got in the pipeline? There is so many things that the developers can add to this game. And one thing I want to chat about that's in the pipeline is definitely going to end up happening at one stage or another is the introduction of new Pokemon to the game. So as it currently sits, there's seven generations of Pokemon, I think eight coming up with a new Sun and Moon. And that means there's a fair few amount of Pokemon that they're going to add to the game. How it's going to work, I don't really know. Having 800, 700 Pokemon at a time is gonna be really hard to complete your Pokedex. And with that being said, the first person to complete their Pokedex, legendaries and all, I deserves to get like something really freaking cool. Cause that's pretty goddamn awesome. Like they gotta get the legendaries. Like it's that's that's an achievement for life. So, like I said, Generation 2 Pokemon. We've got so many in the pipeline. And Generation 2 and Generation 1 are like my favorite. Generation 2 was when they added shiny Pokemon and breeding. So that's going to be really, really interesting if they add that at the same time with Generation 2. Because in Generation 2, you had to breed certain Pokemon in order to get baby Pokemon. And that included like, you know, your little Alekids, your little... Magbees, your Smoochums, your Hitmon, no, what is it, Tyrogue or something? The weird fighting type one? He's meta as hell. And with that one specifically, you've got Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, which can't actually breed because they're, you know, male and female. So you actually need Ditto for that one. So someone has to find Ditto because you need Ditto for that. And of course, Ditto plays a key part in breeding with every type of Pokemon. And uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see how, you know, that all works out. So how do I think they should implement Generation 2 into Pokemon Go? Obviously, it's not an easy answer because thinking about it, it's not going to be great for them to just go, hey, Generation 2, here it is. And I think I saw something on Reddit which was like a four-page infographic on how they should add Generation 2 into Pokemon. And honestly, I think it is a really good idea. So a shout out to Reddit user Wayby for this awesome suggestion. I'm going to run through pretty much what he said to you guys. So firstly, he's got this really awesome idea of having every Pokemon currently in the game, because they don't have genders right now, to just have a randomly generated gender. And that'll be indicated by the female or male symbol somewhere on their summary. And of course, you'll still keep your only female and only male Pokemon like Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee and whatnot. So under the assumption that you have two opposite gender Pokemon in your party, you'll then have this little love heart thing pop up. So once you've got two Pokemon that like each other, he suggests a system where you can add them to the daycare, which is the third tab that will be added. And if you walk a certain amount of kilometers, they'll hatch an egg. And he suggests here that it's the first thing to be added, and I can only agree with this. And the main purpose of it all is to try and get, you know, those fair few baby Pokemon, which are mainly just Kanto Pokemon for the most part, their baby forms, but can also be used for other things like generating a lot of candies when they birth a new eggs. Of course, as you guys know, the eggs that we have at the moment, they give a lot of candies when you actually hatch them. 
And one suggestion he's got here is that after you've caught over 50 Pokemon and seen over 100 Pokemon, you can go ahead and unlock the second Pokedex. And I like this concept or idea that you can't find Pokemon if you don't have that certain Pokedex. Although, the only flaw I see with this idea is that you won't be able to say if Trico is your favorite Pokemon, you have to, you know, go through two generations just to get to it. And hey, if you want to find Gen 7 Pokemon, man, man you gotta grind. You, you have to grind. And the way they probably do this is just block them from finding it, but they still show up on sites like Pokevision and whatnot, but you'd have to obviously unlock that Pokedex to see it in the wild. And I like this idea they've got here that baby Pokemon can only be hatched. Makes perfect sense. It was pretty much like that in the games. You couldn't find baby Pokemon anywhere, but you could hatch them. And this is really interesting. It takes that next level of trying to catch them all. You've got to breed them as well. And this next suggestion, I think, is perfect for how they should handle uh, evolutions within Generation 2. So for those of you who don't know, Generation 2 evolutions, uh, you know, had some previously Pokemon that didn't evolve and now can make them evolve with the addition of an item and what you would traditionally do is trade them. However, they've already made trading exclusive Pokemon evolving via candy, so obviously we'll just go ahead and assume candy will replace that again here. So for the Pokemon that need items to go ahead and evolve, what do they do? Well, you gotta try and get that item. How do you get that item? Great suggestion here from Pokestops. They're just really rare, like, eggs. I guess, like, probably the equivalent of, like, a 10k egg. Or maybe even viable from the shop. Although that would really kind of suck. Pokestop, please. Let's, let's do that one. And yeah, you get your candies, you get your item, and you go ahead and evolve them. Sounds like a really awesome way to go ahead and, you know, make an effort to go out to Pokestops and be like, Alright, man, gotta go grind out a couple metal coats, gotta get one for Scyther, gotta get one for Onyx, you know how it is. Now, I don't know how they're gonna go ahead and exactly handle the new Eeveelutions, because you've got Umbreon during the nighttime, Espeon during the daytime, that's confirmed. But, how do you not get a Flareon, Vaporeon, you know, that? And I don't think they're gonna do another name Easter egg for the, you know, the Eevee. I don't, I don't know if there was Eevee Brothers that had names with Espeons and Umbreons. If there is, let me know, because I'll be the first to try it. <laughs> but yeah, I think it would involve doing something with evolving it at nighttime or daytime to try and get either or. So aside from that, the suggestion he's got here, which I'm not too sure if I initially agree with, but he says right here that after you get your first baby Pokemon, you should then go ahead and get a starter, and then go ahead and be able to catch all the Johto Pokemon. I think it should work something after you've caught the 50 and seen the 100, then you get your Pokedex and then your starter. I think that kind of makes sense, trying to restrict people to, you know, do the baby thing first. Although it would, you know, make everybody go through the mechanic of breeding so they're familiar with it. So I guess there's that kind of upside. Either way, it's going to be an exciting, exciting couple months. I cannot wait. When Generation 2 drops on Pokemon Go, I won't even know what to do with my life. And this is the thing that I love about this game. It's got so much left in it. And just, uh, we're going to have more region-exclusive Pokemons. What do you think the region-exclusive Pokemons are going to be in Johto? I want to make some predictions right now. So if we have a look at the uh, regional exclusive Pokemon that are in Generation 1 right now. Most of them kind of make sense to their respective areas. Especially the one back here in Australia, Kangaskhan, it's literally a kangaroo. Makes perfect sense. Then you've got over in Japan, you've got Farfetch'd. Kind of makes sense, the leak spin, they like that soup kind of thing. I don't really know. They like duck, whatever. Tauros, kind of makes sense, like, you know, Texas, like bulls, cows, whatever, I guess that kind of makes sense. And then Mr. Mime in Europe, everyone's just a freak in Europe, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Mime's an edgy Pokemon. And then, of course, the other thing with the regional exclusives is that they didn't evolve. So, let's have a look at this list. Okay, so for all the possible Pokemon that could be regional Pokemon in the terms that they don't evolve further than they already can, um, I mean, Kangaskhan's got a mega evolution, so I'm letting those slide for now. We've got 10 Pokemon for possibility here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction here that Stantler is the, you know, NA regional Pokemon. I feel like the deer whole thing, I, I think that's an NA kind of deal. I reckon Stantler for NA. For Japan, I want to say Quillfish. They have and love the puffer fish, you know, food. They do some cool stuff over there where they eat it, you know, it's poisonous. Quillfish, definitely a safe bet for Japan, I think. I'm not sure how I feel about this next prediction, but I'm thinking Smeargle for the uh, UK, Europe, whatever. Um, just because it's kind of like Mr. Mime, and they put Mr. Mime in Europe now, so maybe they might put Smeargle there as well. And for Australia? For Australia, I'm going to say Corsola, because we have the Great Barrier Reef with all the coral everywhere. I I'm going to go Corsola. So they're my predictions. Let me know what you guys think. Um, there's nobody to work with, but I think I've got a pretty solid one there. I at least. I at least think Stantler and Quillfish, they're pretty... I think I'm I think I'm good with that one. I think they should be pretty much locked in. If I get all four of those right, someone's sending me money. Tell me now. Anyways, guys, that's enough talking about Pokemon 2, the second generation. Hopefully it comes soon. Ultimately, that would be a very cool way that they would implement Generation 2 Pokemon into the game. But realistically, it's probably going to work something like this.
Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna go out and catch some Pokemon. I hope you did enjoy this little theory session here. If you like to see more of this in the videos, let me know with a like rating down below. And of course, a big shout out to Reddit user Maybuy for the awesome infographic. Alrighty, my brother has just alerted me. There's a Nido King and a Vile Plume. Off we go. Hustle, hustle, hustle. We gotta go, go, go. I'm still wearing my Ugg boots. Okay, so according to Pokevision, they're about 11 minutes out from despawning. Um, they're in our local neighborhood. They're about five minutes away. It's going to be a close call, but they're in separate locations. So we're either going to get Vileplume or we're going to get Nidoking. Now, I have enough candies to evolve Nidoking, so I'm probably going to go for Vileplume first. And if we can try to get Nidoking, that would be hype as well. Alrighty, here he is. Look at him. Just that big vile plume right there just chilling. Now, we don't have any candies to evolve this up to a gloom, so I'm really excited to actually get this guy fresh here. High level, please. Thousands. 33! Yeah, same mine. What's yours? 33. 33? Yep. What? What are the odds? How are they exactly the same? What a massive let... How... Is that a thing? Is that a... I'm so disappointed. I got high hopes for this Nido King coming up. I don't even need to really try for this. But, I mean, it's a new Pokemon of the Pokedex. I didn't pop the Lucky Egg. Ah, I didn't pop the Lucky Egg. Please don't catch. I'll run away. Please don't catch. That one time when you don't want to catch it and you catch it anyway. All right, well that's fine. Vile Go to the Nita King. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. We're gonna we only have too much time here. So, CP level 33. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. All right, so we missed out on the Nita King, and Mitchell's not exactly happy because uh, he had enough candies to get a Vile Plume, but he didn't have enough for a Nita King. And I was the opposite. I had enough for a Nita King, but didn't have enough for a Vile Plume. So uh, we're walking both away with a CP level 33 Vile Plume. Not mad again, just just very, very disappointed. Alrighty guys, so we're back in the battle station and uh, man, I don't know how I feel about that Vile Plume, man. Ah, oh, 33? Like that's shocking. And it's inspired me to make a new section in my uh, Pokemon party. I got this idea off of the subreddit, Pokemon Go. And it's essentially, it's every starred Pokemon. I've gone ahead, I've named it the I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. And it essentially it's just all these rare, strong Pokemon at a ridiculously low CP. 33 Vile, how does that even happen? Like, and the thing that freaked me out the most was that my brother got a 33 one as well. Now, does that mean it's predetermined that your CP is going to be that for everyone? Or did we just get some crazy, crazy RNG that we both got the same bad level? I've never seen that before. So let me know what you think down below, but I think that is... A little nuts. All right, so we've got some evolutions that need to be done, no doubt about it, and uh, we're coming up close to a couple here. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop the lucky egg. So although we did miss out on that Nido King, we have enough to go ahead and uh, you know see what we can get out of this one right here. We've got 120 candies and so many. I'm thinking that I go ahead, I transfer all these Nidorans, and I go ahead and evolve this 474. I feel like this 474 will be much higher than the 774. Lots of fours and sevens, please. It's too many. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and evolve Nidoran. Alrighty, come on, boy. What do we got? I want 800, please. 800, 800, 800. Come on, let's do it. And please, come on. You know you want to. Really? You're gonna do that? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the second uh, Nidorino over here. But uh, which one to choose, guys? Which one do we pick? Let's see who's got better moves. Even though their moves change when you evolve them. Screw it, guys. I, I just want a Nido King. All right, I think what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to leave Nidorino until I'm a high level. I don't know. I want to hit 23 first, I think, before I go ahead and do it. Also, I've been saving up my Pidgey candies because I want to go ahead and try to get another Pidgeot. I want to try and get one higher than the Helix God. That's only just a thousand. I want to try and get you know, a high level one. So here's another one of those tricky situations. I've got this Weeping Bell right here that I can evolve. I've got more than 100 candies, but... I don't want to go ahead and do it because he's at level 626. I'll be on level 600 Bellsprout here and he's not even at the max curve. So I will tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to level this guy up just a little bit over here. Get him up to, you know, near on the curve. I reckon he's close enough to the curve. He's already a high level in a Weeping Bell. Let's go ahead and evolve him. So obviously we're not going to be getting a Victory Bell in today's episode, unfortunately. But if we do get the candies, we only need, what, 25 more? Oh, not even that, like 20 more and we're good to go. So there's a little bit of a Bell Sprout grind in the pipeline for sure. I want a thousand. If we can get a thousand Weeping Bell, that'd be sick. Come on, thousand Weeping Bell. Do it, do it, do it. Come on. Wow. 
Ask and you shall receive, boys. Ask and you shall receive. 1,011 victory. That's going to be a sick victory bell. So the other guy I'm not sure about is our executor right here. We've got 50 candies ready to evolve him, and I think I might pull the trigger on this guy. He's a decently high level, 569. I'd love to chuck a couple Stardust and candies at him to get him to just, you know, be closer to 600. But, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to do it for, like... A I think I might be able to get like a 1,200 Exeggutor out of this. And Exeggutor is one of those, he's like a low-key favorite of mine. Alrighty, guys. I'm pulling the trigger. I can't wait any longer. Let's do it. Put all these eggs together and give me a tree with three coconuts. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so I, don't, I haven't actually had a look at the model of this guy yet. Oh, looks so cool, man. Low-key favorite of mine, like I said. Can definitely not knock the uh, Exeggutor. Such a cool Pokemon. 1,500! Boys, there we go. Okay, now I'm talking my highest level Pokemon right now. Exeggutor, 1500. And he is a very high DPS. He's like, I think the best grass or... Yeah, he's the best grass type I think you can get. Uh, but he does Confusion and Seed Bomb. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so there's the current up-to-date squad. Like I said, looking very diverse so far. And, uh, damn. Oh, I can't wait to evolve that Victory Bell. Just a couple more Bell Sprouts. Might have to make a trip out to South Bank to finish that one off. But yeah, guys, I hope you did go on to enjoy today's episode of Pokemon Go. If you guys did, let me know the like rating down below. And, of course, if you do enjoy my type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And, of course, final reminder, if you want to get involved, the limited edition t-shirt competition. We're giving away $10, $50 cards for Google Play or iTunes. So if you want to get involved and pick up a limited edition t-shirt, support the channel, all that jazz, go ahead in the description down below. I'll catch you guys tomorrow for a brand new episode.